Hello, Miss V at veronicadrake.com. And hello, my beloved son, Eric Medhus. Hello, mom. He says he loves you. I love you. We've been working all morning. And look at my hair. Greasy, greasy. That's because Eric makes me put 35 cc's of, uh, not injectable, <laughs> uh, of, of, of frankincense and myrrh essential oils. Every other portal work person that I do is, so, I'm just, a, I can slither all over the floor. <laughs> uh, one thing, kind of cool, um, sometimes I say, okay, Eric, is everything okay? Is everything okay before we start? No. Okay, was it the, in the setup? No. Oh, okay, is it me? Yes. Is this, is that? And is it being that my feet are dirty? Excuse me, but there's, I guess there's a, well, there's a shocker point there in the feet. There's but, etiquette for this, right? Huh? There's etiquette for this work. I mean. Yeah. So, so well, I'll go clean my feet. All right, fine. So one day uh, I walked over and sat down and said, my gosh, that for some reason, because, you know, I usually have to get a, wet paper towel and dry paper towel, but the, the floor was clean and I did not clean it. And it's like, Eric, did you clean the floor? I said, yes, he did with a dozen rods. So he cleaned my floor. Did you do windows too? Wow. So anyway, that's why my hair looks like this. And I'm, I didn't shampoo it for you guys because I got to go do it again. So Anyway, and uh, also another announcement, Eric spelled out for me with the dowsing rods, you know, as a, a consonant or whatever, that he is master angel now. Woo, woo, woo. I don't know. He's probably been it for a while. And on his next birthday, September 21st, he spelled out with the dowsing rods, he is going to be Archangel Eric Rooney Matthews. Actually, it's Rune. So um, you guys, he's going to have a lot more power then. And you can call on him. Well, he has power now too, but it's going to be so awesome. Now, if you look up Grimoire, G-R-I-M-O-I-R-E, uh, Grimoire's comprehensive compendium, I think, of known archangels. There are a lot of them. They're like, I don't know, 400 maybe or 500. Uh, so get that ebook because it's really fascinating. And I'm going to have to tell them that, hey, you put in my son. He's in there now. He's going to be in there pretty soon. He'll work uh, his way in there. Yeah, he's going to have to do that. Anyway, so we are going to, um, because Amy Coney, I want to say Comey Barrett, got confirmed, I would love to bring in Ruth um, Bader Ginsburg, a lady I really do admire. I don't always believe in her policies, but she always has been there for women. And, um, and the rights of women. I so admire that. Um, and she's just one tough woman in a time where it was not really easy to be tough. So can, can Eric, can you bring that uh, remarkable woman in? Oh, master so, Eric. I feel... I feel a very um, big presence, um, different than Eric's. I want to confirm that it's her. Um, I see her as very young. She's oh. about 18 years old. Oh. Um, and Eric is, um, we're just going to have casual conversation. Okay. And um, it's almost like when she comes in, it's a very big presence. And Eric and I want to step back. So I'm just going to, um, mm, I don't know what's going to happen. I may lose myself to her. So uh, I'll well, just. You, you were voice. a big presence in a very small package, mm -hmm. I would say. And. Um, I really want to thank you for agreeing to, um, maybe reluctantly, I don't know, but thank you for coming forward. And uh, I want to say that I am in awe of your achievements and your contributions to not only women, but humankind. So thank you very much. 
she says, you're very welcome. And she's a very humble woman. Yes, I very think humble. feel that. Yeah. So where would you like to start? I don't want to tell you what to do. Um, she's very um, adamant about having it understood that she was a representative and will continue to be a representative for the underdog. Yes. Whatever the underdog looks like, whatever tone the underdog takes on, and it isn't about where you sit, what side you're on. It is all about being human and being the underdog. This is where she will reach out and take hold of the leadership. Yeah and begin the process of guiding from where she is. Yeah. She's, um, she's very serious about her work, but yet she has a very light, fun personality. Like, um, I'm, I'm in the Supreme Supreme Court. <laughs> what do you mean? She's in the supremest court that there could be. She's watching over from oh. where she is. <clears throat> oh, okay. What? Yeah. What do you do there? Mm -hmm. um, she says mm -hmm. I'm like everyone else, just like I was on Earth. Mm -hmm. um, she's she processed. She did a life review. She checked her achievements. She starred her accomplishments all from a soul perspective <clears throat> and then she went back and looked at it from a human perspective where the karma might come in oh. what could i have done better what should i have done better and she says everybody has these things sure. they're not necessary to focus on but i'm just like you doing my work yeah of course mm -hmm. of course um so what do you think about um, Amy, Barrett, Amy Coney Barrett? Sorry, I haven't watched the news for so long. Um, what do you think about her as a, well, as a person, a mother, uh, a wife, human, but then also as a new um, associate justice? Mm -hmm. She said one thing's for certain, and that is, um, Ms. Barrett has worked for everything that she's achieved. She's a hard worker. She's dedicated to the process. She's dedicated to justice. And she's dedicated to her family. Not necessarily in that order. And um, it doesn't make it a bad thing that she prioritizes family. This is um, going to be quite interesting watching mommy on the Supreme Court. Mm. Um, watching in real time how a woman runs her house and runs her seat on the Supreme Court. This will be a very eye-opening, enlightening process for all women and all people. Her opinions and her values will show very clearly who she is as a person. And yet she will show up and be down the middle. In other words, I'm getting the sense that she's not going to lean real far right and she's not going to lean real far left. And Justice Ginsburg is saying that that's ultimately where the country's going, down the middle. So you feel like she will answer to no one but the Constitution? Because that's what we want. I, I don't- That's precisely I don't, good. I don't want her to- Interpret anything. It is already written for us. Good. So she will, um, she will speak, she will answer only to the Constitution, not to Trump, not to, Pelosi, not to, not to any side, but she, she will be faithful to the Constitution? Is that what you're saying? She was chosen because of her strength and her commitment in general. And her conviction, and Ruth is, I'm sorry, 
Justice Ginsburg, you know, call her Ruth, I feel weird, um, is uh, reassuring that Miss Barrett, Justice Barrett, is um, just like she was when it comes to the underdog and watching for the underdog. It's not about getting rid of anything or overturning anything. That's not going to be what it's about at okay. all. Okay. You won't find her doing that. There's way too much to move forward through. Then it's not gonna backwards. Happen. It's not going to happen. Um, Justice Ginsburg is saying that there's a lot of fodder. There's a lot of um, babble and talk all the time. And the proof will be in the actions as it always is. We're not asking you, and this is her and Eric saying, we are not asking you to like people or to like personalities. We're asking you to understand the issues and look at the Constitution as a guideline for that. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, are you going to help, are you going to help guide her from your side? It's inevitable that I will guide. I have taken an oath, not an oath as a justice, but an oath as a human being. And even though I no longer exist in the human realm, I will always have that lifetime with me. It will always be part of me. And as I move forward through this continuum and do my preparation for what's next for me, I cannot leave behind a world that I so dearly loved. Yeah, of course not. Um, do you feel like she will legislate from the bench like some do? And do you think, and what do you think about legislating from the bench? Do you think that's appropriate for any uh, Supreme Court justice to do? I don't think it's appropriate. I think that you should know, you should stand for what you stand for, but you should be silent. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can have your opinions, political mm -hmm. opinions, sure. And, and also understand this, you might say there's something extraordinarily different about us. And when she says us, she's talking about her peers. We take an oath to not have our opinions and our personal life sway us. However, we are human. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we've had experiences and that we've lived through certain things and we can be touched emotionally by these things, it's almost impossible not to have an opinion. There's a process that one must go through when one's opinions are getting in the way. And that is to step back and check yourself. Yeah. Oh, Lambert's no. Okay, um, Lambert, my dear friend, he's calling, but I'll, I'll call him back. Um, do you think she will legislate from the bench at times or not? She doesn't seem like the kind of just. Yeah, yeah. He's, she says that she's too principled and too, I, I guess the phrase would be by the book which is what we want by the book, yeah. the book being the constitution. She didn't take this role on for it to be her personal platform. Okay. She understands. There's no hidden agenda here. Okay. What about you? Did you ever, ever legislate from the uh, bench in anything that you voted for? If I did, it was unknowing. I went through the process of checking myself as I spoke. I knew where I stood on the issue. And again, that's part of being human and bringing that to the table. That humanizes the process. It softens the process. But looking at the Constitution and looking at the rights, you know, and understanding that 
the 14th Amendment stands for something and everybody has the equal rights. I couldn't in good consciousness take anything away from anybody. Yeah, that's true. Now, oh, go ahead. Um, she's saying that um, part of the reason for this lifetime for her was so that she could experience lack and frequent injustices. Oh. She had to be the recipient of them if she was going to help change them. Well, tell me about your upbringing. Tell me about your life. Did you go through some hardships? Well, she says that her handicap, if you will, was being a woman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And in a time when women were not anywhere near equal, yeah. even to the point of being reprimanded because she was in a male school, one of very few females in a male school. Oh, wow. Yeah. And also her... There's sadness around her early on, um, sickness, illness, um, my stomach. It's not necessarily hers. Um, her mother was ill oh, when she okay. was a, a young girl. And I believe that she's saying that her mother said goodbye very early. Oh, I'm so sorry. So there was a hardship and a tragedy. Yeah. Um, and oh, oh, and also um, there was a um, a death. Oh. The death uh, of not only her mother, but um, I want to say a brother or a sister. Oh. Yeah, I've, we were gonna we were gonna talk about Beethoven, but like. 10 minutes before the session, I said, let's do Ruthie. Hey, by the way, do you like uh, your nickname, um, um, R RBG? Yeah. Red, blue, green. Do you like it though? That's what she said, red, blue, green. <laughs> yeah, she says it's fitting. It's not what you call me, it's the respect you show me. And she oh. said she knows that it's lovingly said with respect. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you had a lot of fans. Mm -hmm. Now, talking about the Constitution, do you see it as a living, breathing document, or do you see it as just how the founders uh, wrote it? I'm not for changing. Um, the phrase, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater comes okay, up. So you're, you're not uh, for the, it being living. Because, you know, if it's living and breathing, then you put it in the hands of men. Anybody. Uh, anybody, anybody. Anybody. She said it wasn't, we live in a disposable world where everything is throwawayable or everything can be rewritten, reconfigured, started over. She said, we don't need to start this country over. We need to go back to the principles that oh, founded yeah. the country. Exactly, I agree. Um, and you know what I thought was really cool is how, although you had disagreements um, uh, of um, principles you and anton scalia just got along famously you and, and your families and stuff and i i i wish that we saw that um throughout the government like in congress like wouldn't it be cool if mitch mcconnell and schumer and pelosi and mark meadows and stuff if if they <laughs> could get together and have family barbecues and all that stuff and then just put things aside but the vitriol is just awful, but they, I wish they could learn um, from, from life, Mike and Anton. Were. She lived her life the way that she 
was always living her life to be the example. Yeah. What good does it do for me to have an opinion, a belief, or a principle, or a value, and surround it and protect it with hate? It makes no sense. Mm. Makes no sense. You know, from a from a heaviness perspective, yeah. that creates a very sick. Take it any way you want, human being. Yeah, I know. There's a, a lot of hate out there right now. And I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like it's more on the left. It's just they've gotten just so mean and mad and angry. Uh, I might be wrong, but it, it just... She says, she says this. She says, we can't... We can't point the fingers we can't do this because when the right points to the left and the left points to the right we're all doing the same thing yeah. and so what needs to be done is people need to understand for themselves yeah. who they are we live in a country where we are allowed these freedoms people died for our right to have these freedoms yeah. use these freedoms in love we need to. We need to love each other. I mean, we do. Uh, we need to love the left and love the right. And yes, they're angry, uh, but we need to. We need to. Eric, love at them. We need to. Throw Eric would like them. to interject. Eric would like yes. to interject here. Please Eric do. says that if you talk to a right person, and he's using oh, Eric, oh, the extreme right are just awful. Right. Oh, and God. if you talk to the left, it's like it perspective is everything that's true the extreme right i think is probably in my opinion it's my opinion the most hateful of the lot oh my god the most hateful i will say them you know of what i've seen of my personal experiences and i've had personal experiences with the extreme right they are the worst they are the most intolerant and despicable <laughs> Of well, all. But they, they, need, they, they need love. They need love. They all need love. Everybody does. Justice Ginsburg is saying that we as a nation are festering. Yeah. There is an infection that runs deep in this nation. And each one of us are infected. And it's not COVID. It's not yeah. the virus. Yeah. It is apathy. It is hate. It is, yes, segregation, mm -hmm. discrimination. Yeah. That's what's making this country oh, so, wither. It's more energy to hate than to love. Jeez. Mm -hmm. And even people who feel, who know intellectually that we are one, it's not the same as living as such. You know, that's, that's a whole other ball game. But anyway, RBG, I got this plan. I want to buy, we're not going to afford it, a bunch of these scalar energy machines, um, generators, and put, Eric's going to help me pick, put, um, pick out an image that best represents the fear, the fear collective. And I'll put it in there with an intent card, you know, and just run it 24 7, bam, bam, bam. And just tweak the frequency up and up and up until we just get rid of, you know, transform the fear into love. I mean, fear is you know, like the, the, you know, the, the the victims and the perpetrators, the drug smugglers and the drug addicts and all that stuff, and the jihadis and the. Anyway, so it's gonna take a while. One of the things that she understands, and I feel like I'm going to cry with this because she's very passionate and very emotional about this. Mm -hmm. No one is born a criminal. No. No one is born a baby. Yeah. And every life that comes into this world, unfortunately, doesn't have the same opportunity as mm -hmm. the next life. Mm -hmm. But where she is now, she understands that that's not the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's spiritual contracts. Right. If it were, if we were all the same, if we all believed the same thing, what would we have? 
we, it would not be this diverse, great country that it is. Yep. And she's also saying that poverty, poverty is the real villain here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Poverty. And, you know, it's, it's terrible because scarcity is an absolute illusion. Mm -hmm. You know? And, and she wants to really be clear about, she understands the fear of a young mother not being able to feed her child and to not being able to keep a roof over her child's head. Mm -hmm. She does understand that. And that was always part of her heart, creating equality and creating systems that maybe she never saw come to fruition because they were so broken. Yeah. That was one of her biggest regrets. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right, so what do you think about having, do you think nine is the appropriate number of justices on the Supreme Court or do you think there should be more? Um, Eric said nine is perfect and she's, she's uh, concurring. Um, from a spiritual perspective, nine is the number, you know, nine really? is a very spiritual number. Nine is the ending. And then we start the cycle all over again. Oh, wow. I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. so okay. Yes. She said that is a very fair number. Okay. Do you ever wish you had retired earlier? Absolutely not. Oh, good. Okay. Absolutely. Um, uh, all right, let's talk about Roe v. Wade. Um, that sort of changed everything um, in the Supreme Court uh, decisions. It sort of uh, seemed to break the mold. Mm -hmm. um, it was almost like a legislating a bit. I mean, is that, is that the government's... Um, it's almost like legislating morality. Is that the government's decision uh, or should it be in the state? Uh, or should it be between, uh, should it be the, I don't know. I mean, you, you're dealing with- The government with, has no- You're dealing with the right of a woman, but you're also dealing with the right of, of, of a child. So it's so difficult. Is it, is it really the business of the government to make that decision? She said, no, it's not the business of the government. The woman's body is sacred in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And when the baby, when the fetus is in the woman, they are one. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. one. Yeah. And so it really is not for the government to ever say what a woman should do with her body. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have any place. And she wants to assure us that will not be overturned. No, no, there's no way, she yeah. said. That the people that are standing on that platform were accusing Justice Barrett of perhaps taking women oh, no, back. Right. It's but, not going to happen. But what about the choice uh, between um, uh, whether to have unprotected sex or not? Why shouldn't that be the choice? Help me understand. I'm not sure I understand. Well, you have, you have two pro-choice. The choice of whether to have unprotected sex or not, oh. or whether to have an abortion or not. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, um, she's smiling because um, birth control is not always the first thought one has. Um, and she is in favor of the morning after pill. Okay. Yeah. Which some people would say is birth control. Yeah. So she she's in in favor of the right to take the pill. Yes, of course. Yeah. Personally, it's a whole different story, but we don't. That's not where we go. Okay. With this, she says. So, would I want to take the pill? No. Okay. 
if you got pregnant and it was unwanted, would you carry it to um, a term and, and uh, give it up for adoption or would you be okay having an abortion? I would make the decision based on my emotional stability, my mental stability, my financial oh my stability. Yeah, because you know, a lot of people physical. would not be told. I didn't, think, but a lot of people would not be emotionally capable Correct. of carrying the term and giving it away. Mm -hmm. It's a very complicated issue, and it depends on the person. You know. You know, there are so many things in this world that. You, we try to have balance with, and you know, the fact that a woman becomes a woman at yeah. perhaps the age of 13, or in my case, 11, when I got my period, yeah. what do you do with that at 11 years old? I mean, it, yeah. there are girls, I mean, when I was 11 years old, I was like sucking my thumb and playing Barbies, I don't know. Yeah, I know. But, there are girls 11 years old that are having babies. I mean, babies are having babies. But, you know, the person's responsible for these 11-year-olds, you know? It, it, she said, this is, a, this is a, a slippery road when we get into telling people how to parent. I know, yeah. Slippery slope. So the whole abortion thing, it, it's got to be just, it depends on the person. You know, there's too many factors. There's too many factors to decide. Everybody's got to be pro-life, or everybody's got to be pro-choice. It's just too. It's just too much. You know? And I have to say, excuse me, Justice Ginsburg. This is my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. If a woman has an abortion, and she has a very strong background of religion, yeah, that can be detrimental to her. I have, I have helped women undo that plague, if you will, of mm -hmm. self-loathing and oh, guilt. No, and no. Because what I understand mm -hmm. is there's, you know, however the soul crosses over, it, it crosses over whether you miscarriage or whether you abort. There's, it, it just, there's no delineation. Yeah, and I, I, I had a, um, a YouTube on um, abortions and miscarriage and all that stuff. And it was very healing for a lot of people uh, to know that it's sometimes a, a spiritual contract about loss and humility. And, and um, you know, sometimes it's just a beautiful lesson. And it's just like, it's for, for the baby, it's like going through a revolving door, you know? And hey, if you think about it, if you think about already? it, a soul, in the soul world, <laughs> There is no such thing as time. So a soul that lives six hours yeah. really can impact anything the way a soul that lives 96 years can exactly. impact. Exactly, exactly. Oh, oh yeah, that's really profound. Yeah, and um, well, we're getting down a rabbit hole, but uh, um, I remember I, I had a woman who, you know, wanted to um, know where she could get an abortion. And I said, well, let's just make sure you're pregnant because the, the titers, I mean, it was very confusing, the test. So I took her to my ultrasound room and did an ultrasound and she wanted to look at it. She saw the heartbeat. She made her mind now, not going to do it. And then she, a couple of years later, she brought her little baby boy and she said, I'm so glad, I'm so glad. For so so for some people it's very tenuous. It really is. And um But to have that right to choose yeah, is imperative. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, all right, so that's interesting. Um, but yeah, it won't be overturned. So yeah. Yeah. uh okay, so um anything else you want to talk uh, about uh uh R B G our I always want to say R G B. Hi. Roy Roy um, G. Big. RBG. 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 Okay, so before I start my usual. Mm -hmm. Got wanna, it. You want to talk about anything else? Anything um, else about, about um, Amy um, Coney Barrett or mm -hmm. anything? Well, she wants to share this message with the collective. 
Okay. If just one person throws in the town, it compromises the whole lot. Oh, yeah. And so stand your ground, be proud of what you believe, and lead your life with your heart, but <clears throat> know the facts. And she said, it's not so easy nowadays to get the facts. I yeah, know. And Eric comes in with, that's why, and I have said this, and we are teaching this, understanding psychic and mediumship development will help you understand your truth and what it feels like. Exactly. That's powerful. Yeah. All right. Well, I just know it's getting kind of late, so we'll go through these very quickly. What was your spiritual mission this lifetime, and also what you were to learn and teach was kind of could be kind of the same thing. Some of it. Mm -hmm. um, to experience loss and lack and being different, so that I could be a voice that would make a difference. Oh. I walked my talk. That's good. And I felt like you, my next question, did you uh, accomplish that? And I, I really feel like you did. Absolutely. She said, in <clears throat> more ways than one could ever understand. Mm. Uh, did you have any regrets? If so, what were they? Or it, what was it? <laughs> Your main regret. that I didn't get to personally and intimately meet more people. Oh yeah. High up on that bench. Mm -hmm. yeah. I heard the stories, but I never got to really meet the people. Oh. Okay. What was your first insight when you crossed over? What was your first aha? Whoa. that I was really home, Ooh. that I could finally say I have arrived. Cool. It Can wasn't accolades here on earth. It wasn't accomplishments or awards or titles. I, I, I arrived in style. Cool. With my head held high and my dignity intact. That's great. Can you share another life that most influenced your one as Ruth um, Bader Ginsburg? She was a follower of Joan of Arc. Okay. She saw firsthand what strong women do. Mm -hmm. She awesome. saw firsthand the conviction and that getting it done, what it looked like. She Wait, a film? Who'd you say? Joan of Arc. Oh, Joan of Arc, okay. Oh, and wow. And she saw the power of a woman fully engaged in her beliefs. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Do you have any messages, uh, any more messages? You gave one, but uh, any others you wanna share? Everyone has the ability to make a change. Everyone has the ability to take this country where they feel it best belongs. Use your voice. Yeah. Vote. Yeah, and quit bitching and moaning. Send love instead. It's you know, if, if we would just think for one minute, and I'm going to go on my soapbox for a half a second. Yeah, please. We would think everybody that lost their life, family members that lost family members, for us to have the freedoms we have, yeah. get off your ass and vote. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, so, but only vote for who I want. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, so, uh, um, Ruth G Gator Binsberg, <laughs> sorry. Uh, what, can you share anything cool, kind of funny or fun about you that nobody really knows about? Like, you know, I always use the example that um, uh, Madame Curie, I think it was her, always sewed a little, ha had a little sewed in um, a teddy bear inside her skirt or something like that. I had slippers underneath my desk. I took my high heels off, well, as high oh, as I could. I would too. All right. And I wore slippers. Oh, good. Were they little teddy bear ones? <laughs> no, they weren't little teddy bears. Oh, they were very, they, listen, listen, this is important because she's going to make a funny. They oh. were very conservative slippers. <laughs> oh, 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 that's funny. That's funny. Okay. That's really funny. Can you tell mm -hmm. us any other information that will enable humans to evolve to their greatest potential? That's the same. That's the same. I don't know. Somebody <laughs> gave that to me. Don't look at limitations. Look at possibilities. Yes. Mm. Oh, my uh, second eldest daughter, Michelle, and when she was like two or three years old, she loved big words. So anytime she she liked to take our junk mail and she'd call them her combinations and possibilities. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric, is there anything else you want to ask or Veronica, would you like to ask anything? Um, no, Eric was very chatty during this. I mean, he, he is um, leading the way for people to raise their energy um, oh. and helping people to open their eyes. And he's also saying, and I, we don't know when this is going to air, so I don't know if you'll get oh, it I'm going to do it pretty soon. I'm going to yeah, do it because, up next. Um, Eric is really adamant also about people sharing their voice. Yeah. Go make a difference. If something's happening that you want more of or disagree with, he said, you do have a choice. And don't become um, lazy or compliant or complicit if it's not in your heart. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And y'all, thank you so much, Ruth uh, Bader Ginsburg, for coming and sharing. And um, Welcome home, yeah. And thank you so much for you uh, for what you did uh, and your like vacation spot here. Yeah. yeah. And what you contributed. Thank you, uh, Veronica at veronicadrake.com, which I'll put here. Thank you, Eric. And we're gonna get off to work. You guys check out Eric and and my new site where we do portal work, we close portals so that you can, and we get rid of your nasty negative entities. We open portals that should be open so that abundance comes in. And there's all sorts of abundances. It's creativity, positive information, wealth, lots of wealth, and love, health. One lady who had this creepy entity that she found when she took a selfie, she just wanted the negative stuff gone, but a, a relative just sent her the, a couple of days later, this check for $75,000, it's crazy. Anyway, so check it out at Atlantis Scalar, S-C-A-L-A-R.com. It is up, just a few tweaks need to be done, that's it, well, like I need to edit it when I have time. So anyway, thank you guys, bye. bye. See bye. you later.